Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher, Stephen Ford, and Mike Caspel. What's up, Cass? Yo, dog, great to be here. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm coming at you pseudo live from Salt Lake City Comic Con. <laughs> so coming in actually live via Salt Lake City Comic Con. Yeah, well, pseudo live if you're just now listening to it and we're not, you know, and you're not listening to us live. Recorded live in front of a recorded studio live. Yeah. cat audience. <laughs> so that's cool. So uh, what do you what do you got lined up? What's your itinerary for this weekend? Just um, there are like just it. yeah crazy amounts of panels and stuff. I'm gonna try to corner Brandon Sanderson. Uh, we share editors, so I'm gonna try to corner him and tell him to take a vacation so that <laughs> so that I can get a book or two out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and that Larry Correa is here. Mike Stackpole, who I'm really looking forward to meeting because he's kind of unofficially my mentor. He, he kind of doesn't know that, but I was taking, like, I was going to his writing seminars at Gen Con back in the 90s. So it is really cool for me to be at a Comic Con as a guest with Michael Stackpole. Like, that's hmm. that's really awesome. Like, things have just like come to fruition. You know what I mean? And and he writes all the Star Wars but like he used to write uh, X Wing all the that stuff and everything. Um, what the extended universe or whatever? It's yeah, all the expanded universe that, that JJ and Disney got rid of. <laughs> but uh, I feel like I, when I meet him, I already know perfectly what I was going to say. I'm just going to be like, when we last met, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. <laughs> Drop. Oh, I'd be like, oh, oh my god, that would be so gangster. <laughs> so like, who are you who, who are you again <laughs> yeah that's exactly what he'll say he'll just be like and you are who uh, but yeah but in any case I, i'm doing like a panel at eight to nine tomorrow night on uh like soulmates and bromances and everything uh and then friday i'm signing from three to four at the shadow mountain booth and then saturday i'm doing a representation in sci-fi fantasy and how it's win-win uh, from seven to eight. So, but there are just, there are, it, this is a huge, huge con. Um, Denver keeps saying that they're like number three, but I think Salt Lake might be bigger. Um, and there's just so many panels. It's it's one of those, you know, conflicting things when you go to a con like this. There are so many panels that you're like, oh, I want to go to that. Oh, that's at the same time as the other two panels I wanted to go to. <laughs> you know, there's just so much programming and everything and i'm going to try to get a photo op with jewel state uh because that's been on my bucket list for a while i got her autograph before but i wasn't able to get a picture with her so uh i think that'll be fun that was uh, for those of you who don't know who she is that is kaylee from firefly um, oh i know and a number of now. other things yeah she was on stargate uh, atlantis as well she's she's on all kinds of stuff a lot of sci-fi things yeah but yeah, I'm which, really which is why she's there. <laughs> I already saw some neat stuff just walking around. Like somebody made the Iron Throne out of lightsabers, and it was it was out there sitting there. It like oh, all that, the sick. lightsabers from the saga <laughs> made into the Iron Throne. It was it was really cool. <laughs> so that's that's gonna be fun. Can you, you get some in, pictures of that? It? Can you sit in the Iron Throne? Yeah, you can sit in it. Yeah. Is it rated for 275 pounds? Uh, probably not. The real <laughs> Iron Throne probably is, but you and I are just like, yeah. They're like, hover your butt against uh, above it. Don't actually sit in it, fatty. Yeah, it's like <laughs> there's a reason called Drogo can't sit in the Iron Throne. <laughs> Aside from being dead. <laughs> Aside from, oh, don't tell Bonet. Yeah, spoiler alert. Dude, spoiler alert. You got to say that stuff ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Bonet, wow. Bonet loves Jason Momoa, and I was like, you know, my girlfriend has a crush on him. And to my buddy Ryan, he was like, everyone's girlfriend has a crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fair point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't, I'll catch her on Google looking at pictures of him. She's like, I'm trying to cast him for my movie. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> it's all okay. It's okay. It's all good. Don't look at my guy. Kenny's like, I'm trying to cast him for my movie, too. 
Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Are we yeah. All? This last uh this last uh weekend, um I got to play with a friend of the show, John, known as uh, son of Bjorn. And he was out in my way for a wedding and we were able to play a lot of 40k, which was really, really cool. Um, and I got the first game on, on his space walls with my Necrons. And then, uh, he got the better of me. I, I played like a hybrid inquisition list with death watch sisters and gray Knights, And he squeaked it out on that one. And then the last one I was playing uh, death watch and, uh, and sisters and he borrowed my gray knights to pair them with the space wolves and my poor death watch and sisters just got straight rolled it went like like at turn three the game the uh the store gamers haven was closing at turn three so we had to wrap it up but i was like i was like oh yeah it was close saved by the bell like <laughs> i don't think there would have been a turn four <laughs> there's no what is no way that we could ever know who would have won this game so we have to call this one a draw it, yeah, but exactly man. but 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 seeing as I only have like 300 points left, I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you have this one, brother. You're the guest. <laughs> yeah, he straight rolled me up in that last game. It was brutal. Big shout out to Son of Bjorn, long time listener, right? Yeah, yeah. He was a really good guy, too. So that was a lot of fun. Too easy. Rob, what you got for our Tabletop Marketplace? Will, Kenny, we have a lot of products coming out this week. Don't do from- don't don't do that. <laughs> it's the best. I feel like you're I was about to click on and buy a sham wow right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know why I looked up and I started moving my mouse. I was like, where do I buy that? <clears throat> it's true. No, this week uh yeah, there's a decent amount of stuff. I mean, there's some stuff Juice might be interested in. I guess uh Admac Codex. Admec data card. No dice though. That was um expected dice. Do you know how salty I was at that? I was like, I saw those Death Guard dice and I was like, oh my God, those are the hands down sickest dice GW has ever come up with. Pus filled bubbles that represent each one of the different numbers. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for the Admec. And they and, don't get and, and the way they made it was so it was clearly like a little gross little like like plushy bubble encased in a dice so it's actually it's like full yeah. born, mm-hmm. full, like it's fully formed and and like like armor with pus coming through it i was like this is the most creative set of dice you ever put out man Congrats. ever put out yep there is it's very forward thinking i think i think they were quite popular um but yeah no no dice but that's okay uh there is a data cards for 15 the book itself is 40 and it's the book does have a lot of content i mean it's it's basically three mini books. Of course, we finally got our combined cult mechanicus and Skitari book. Um, and they packaged in the uh, knights into here as well, which used to obviously be their own books. So we kind of went from what 24, 23, 24 books last edition. Now we're down three just with this book coming out. So there's 28 stratagems in here. Whereas the, one with the most stratagems thus far was Marines with 29. So you're getting content value out of this book for sure. Definitely. You know, um, there isn't as many data sheets. There's only 22 data sheets, but still there is a lot of content in here separately released. And I think we talked about this last week was Belisarius call for 55. But remember the triumvirate that he comes with Celestine and horse lady is 80. Great facts. Yes. So, uh yeah, wow GW that they still are selling out the triumvirates, but then also breaking off and doing call like, hmm, kind of surprising to me. I am. I mean, if they ever obviously come out with <laughs> Plastic Sisters, cough cough, it would be interesting to see what they price Celestine at for sure. These, but they definitely have that option uh, right there. It's she's going to be priced at uh, buy her get gray facts for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at that point, I think all of these are going to be buy buy uh buy this get one for free. But that's that's how they do it, and that's how it works. It's only crazy if it doesn't work. So those are the big ones, and then of course the Death Shroud bodyguard uh, came out too at sixty dollars. Now 
I know we talked about, we touched on this last week, how the internet once GW did their preview, which by the way, the big GW will probably be dropping a big preview this Sunday for the stuff coming out around the first of the month. That seems to be their moniker is like the third Sunday. They drop a big kind of splash preview of the stuff uh, for the next month. So look for that. Who knows what it's going to be? I think um, Shadespire is coming out for uh, Age of Sigma. But the Death Guard, the Death Shroud, people were a little bit more fired up than normal because there was three models. And then when the pricing dropped for them being $60, people were super fired up. You know, everybody was like, oh, the Forge World ones are $65 for, for five. And what the heck? And angry. So much salt. So much salt. And I... I understand. Yeah, it. But, but but aren't the new ones like way bigger on 50 millimeter bases? So that's the thing. That's what a lot of people were saying. I I honestly just thought it. I don't think I ever actually said it. But I I mean, I mean we all made the comparisons. Oh, but it'll just be like Centurions or whatever, right? Because that was three models for or aggressors and make the comparison there. It turns out they're on 40 mil bases and they are from what it looks like on the G dub site, just as big as the cataphracty terminators out of the, the health box. Now it's obviously very hard to take scale from, you know, some of these pictures where you have other things in there that you might not know exactly how big they are, but that's what it looks like right now. And they're definitely on 40 mil bases. It says it in the GW, um, says it in the GW post, uh, item post, whatever you want to call it. So I'm sure once that becomes a little bit more apparent this so weekend, 60 bucks for three, exact like still 40 millimeter dudes yeah and on forge world you can get five for 65 and i mean i i guess some people don't like the way the forge world ones look and they are resin i don't i mean i i don't think the forge ones look anywhere near as good as the new plastics for sure for sure no i agree with you there um, for sure. <laughs> and it probably doesn't help either and i'm sure people are going to pick up on this is the blade lord terminators are 60 dollars for five now, granted, they aren't that cataphracty, or are they a cataphracty? I forget. I don't think they are. I doubt I it. I think just the the ballers are. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So that's a, a little kick in the pants right there. Me personally, I don't I don't have an opinion on it until I get them in my hands, you know, and kind of look at them and be like, okay. I mean, I'm not know. salty. Like they're dope. I'm gonna buy them. Like it doesn't matter. Like that's. So I, I just don't. It's like, dude, you play this hobby and you're gonna like get mad about sixty bucks at this point. That's ludicrous. Everything. This is just. We always like like you're not gonna. Pay, first off, you know you're not gonna pay sixty bucks. You're gonna you're gonna get a discount. You're gonna somewhere. get a discount. Yeah. You're gonna find it on eBay. You're gonna get this. Trade this to your friend. Whatever. Like, I mean, if 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 the money is an issue, you'll find a way around it. Otherwise, it's typically not an issue. We have a hobby budget and we decide how to spend it each month. Mm hmm. Preach. But you know, I don't. I ain't mad. I'll check them out. Um, I think a lot of lists are going to run them. Uh, I think some of us might not, but at the end of the day, I just think, you know, even like that one comment that we read, like those, those one guys were like, well, me and my buddy are just going to split the box and make a couple of and make a typhus, make a dope typhus, you know, instead of spending 40 bucks for typhus, which speaking of which next week's releases are going to be uh, the death guard foul blight spawn for 25 clam pack. Blight Lord Terminators, like I said, $60 for a box. Typhus will also come in a box for $40. Then we got the campaign box for Age of Sigmar, Firestorm for $65. Three new army boxes for Age of Sigmar as well at $170 each. And then uh, audiobook and a hardback Katia Stans book for $27. How, how good are those new army boxes going to be for $170? So... I haven't read the article yet. We do have an article written up breaking down all the costs on them. But I have not. I have not looked at it. I don't. I, I know. Uh, I do remember one of them had the, that crib. This remember that dark elf um, crazy. It's like a war hydra or you can make the crib this. And I think that was like 60 bucks and that had like a ton of miniatures in it. So I feel like they're going to be a decent value, but I, I could not tell you right this second. But either way. We will have uh, some more to say, that, you know, of course, on the site at the end of the day uh, in the next few days. So check that out. Now, on the non-G-Dub side of things, uh, a lot of interesting Kickstarters happening in the next couple of weeks. We saw the wet palette go up on Tuesday, I believe it was. And that got funded within, I want to say it was 45 minutes. Yeah, um, it, was, it was like, yeah, it was in 40-something minutes. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, that, Everlasting Web Palette. 
Is that uh, red, red grass gaming? Mm-hmm. Is that right? And they're they've already broken a hundred thousand in pledges. Yeah, to, wow. uh, they're gonna start three D start three D mm-hmm. printing the shit and some web pellets. Yep. Well, they're supposed to be ABS plastic, the ones they provide. And I think they upped the, you know, the gray sponge that came in, it was only 2.5 millimeters. And I think the one that they showed on the Kickstarter is going to be 3.5. So a little bit thicker, which I can get behind for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I've been using mine. Very happy with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely uh, would be a little happier with a thicker sponge. Yeah, I think that was definitely a thing. Um, so far, you know, I, I use it. I, I just I use it every day. It, but yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's a bad product at all. I just got to get in the habit of using it. You know, it was always such a hassle to use a wet palette in general. You know, it would it would just get grimy and, and you could never transport it because it, stuff would leak everywhere. And yep. this actually is a very robust product. Even the promo or not the promo, the review product that's 3D printed. It still seems to be watertight. Like I turned it upside down a couple of times on stream and I was like, I don't know how this, this is, this is obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. First off it's a wet palette. You shouldn't have so much water in it. Like your sponge is floating. And mm. <laughs> so, no, I'm very happy with it. I'm going to take it with me to my painting class in Temecula next month. Uh, like it's, it's transportable. You know, it's, I'm, I'm stoked. And yeah, hey, I'm going ha- to have to check that one out because as you know, like Colorado is where paints go to die. Dry is <laughs> So I've home. been using a wet palette for a while, but I was just using like a regular one from, you know, art supply store. Mm-hmm. So it'd be cool oh. to, to use one that's more geared towards what we're using it for. You yeah, know and I'm, I mean? all, I'm all about like the all in one pack. It's like, this is manufactured. It's very tight. I don't need to go grab, you know, these paper towels, fold them twice, put some wax paper. I don't need, I just like, y'all just want you to make a product for me that I can buy replacement things for. And I'm happy. And that's what they have done. And hey, you don't, you don't have to even take our word for it. They got funded like seven times over, I think. <laughs> like, so it's, 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 it's all good. This product is real. Congratulations, guys. You know? Yeah, yeah big no. shout out, man. That is, what an amazing thing that Kickstarter can do, uh, especially for that, for that kind of niche market. Like, good job. And they did it right. Like, they sent it out. You know, they contact a lot of folks. They're like, hey. You know, you want to you want to review this. We'll send you a sample, you know, and they straight up sent the box out there and included a bunch of, you know, talking points. They're like, this is a 3D print. You know, they're very thorough about it. So it definitely speaks to their attention to detail and their ability, like, to conduct business because they were like, this is not exactly what we wanted to put out. But we felt like we need to put something out to either raise funds to do what we want to do or just this was our dream. It's not exactly what we wanted to do, but it's better than nothing. And I can definitely respect that because we all know sometimes whatever we envision doesn't exactly happen that way, but it definitely talks to their testament of, uh, you know, uh, business. I don't know. The human, I guess, but I'm impressed with it. Uh, Speaking of another Kickstarter too, the table of ultimate gaming has uh, probably by the time you you listen to this, either a week or less than a week left on Kickstarter as well. That's the um, they have all different sizes. You can get a D and D table. That's those fresh looking tables that look good. You know whether it's in your living room, or whether it's in your dining room. You know just so you can kind of have a dope gaming table at home that fits in. You know that your significant other might be okay with, or just to you know have it on the casual and invite people over to play. Just kind of kick it in your uh, living room or whatever, and just uh, run some games. They have D and D size ones. They have 40k size ones. So make sure you check that Table of Ultimate Gaming Kickstarter out as well. Like I said, they they were funded super quick as well, and I think they're approaching a million dollars in pledges already. Dude, that is unreal. The number that they have jumped mm-hmm. in just a small amount of time. Like, wow. The community is going nuts for this table. It looks cool. And they've unlocked a lot of, you know, stretch goals. And uh, these are guys that have business background again, you know, all the stuff they're doing, all the promotions they're doing going, you know, they went to Gen Con to unveil it. I don't know how they pulled that one off, but it was awesome. You know, they're doing it. They're definitely doing it right. It's cool to see projects like that because it gives it paves the way for more exciting things down the line or perhaps to set up companies um you know to produce 
I mean, there's no, there's no reason they can't think of all of the other things they could produce from this point, you know, that has to do with the gaming table. The things you put on the gaming table, you know what I mean? Like there's the sky's the limit. Like this is going to be one to watch. We're going to be hearing about these guys for a long time. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. With that kind of funding and with a business background, they've, they've had a successful model now and they have a lot of cool new add-ons and updates and all sorts of new things they're going to be able to, like, I'm sure they already know what, how they're going to, how they're going to scale their business. So I'm really stoked to see like, this what's up, man. You know, like in America, like you can be an entrepreneur, you can do all these things, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's really hard. No matter how good your product is, me and Juice talked about this earlier. Like, unfortunately it seems to me that mostly the value of your product gets overshadowed by your ability to sell the products in our country. Things like mm-hmm. Kickstarter, and I have, I have a million negative things I can say about Kickstarter being on the on the uh, on the end of a successful Kickstarter on some of the back door elements sure. of it. It's really annoying, but it gives you the element sometimes to bypass that shenanigans of like, oh, I'm just better at selling shit than you are, even though my product's really you know not as good. Like these guys have good products, now they're getting funded. That's all that matters, and that makes me happy as hell. Yeah, and and they've got such. Um a demand in their product that this isn't just like a, Hey, I'm doing a Kickstarter. You get something, I get something out of it and we're done. Like, I believe that Mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about this table for a very long time. Or the products that they come out with down the road as well. You know, like it's getting, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to see stuff like this, especially when, you know, I wrote up a post recently talking about how there's so many miniature companies out there. And if there's something that you want to do or a specific vision you have for your army or your hobby, there is probably a miniature or something very similar to what you're envisioning out there from a company that you've probably never heard of. And that's how many, where we're at in 2017, where we're at in the hobby from, you know, Kickstarter, from, just the technology, the way technology has gone, the way it has, um, not necessarily like the 3D print kind of side of things, but from just, you know, resins and affordability and, you know, outsourcing things and just the way technology is in general right now. Like there's so much out there. It's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy. Like this is a great time for the hobby, regardless of rule sets, et cetera, just because of the selection. Yeah. I feel you on that. What do we got for, um, so is that it? Kickstarter, AdMech, and Death Guard, and AOS releases? I feel, uh, like, a new, I, I feel like any more. Uh, we got a new Magic set coming out. Pirates and Dinosaurs next week. What's what? Magic, that? Magic the Gathering? Yeah. Did, did Pirates and Dinosaurs, did they line with uh, or align themselves with uh, My Little Ponies? <laughs> Not yet, but give Wizards enough time. There'll be some sort of ponies in it, I'm sure. Is the what's the name of the actual set? Stop messing. I with think me. it's like Axion or something. Oh, or? I thought you. I thought you were truly telling me the truth, and I was messing with you that it was lions and tigers. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's just the theme of the set. Like oh, it gotcha. literally has pirates. It literally has dinosaurs, and they actually went back and retconned or errated or FAQ, whatever the magic term is previous cards like there was a lot of stuff in like the ice age block which was only two sets uh, ice age and cold snap to be the same keywords and i'm stretching for words here because i don't know what the terms are called anymore that much in magic but to make them the same thing that you can do with the dinosaurs and stuff yes there it is words you can do stuff with dinosaurs and stuff and pirates next week but only next yeah, week. Th- third grade Kenny would be super stoked for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think if they just threw some ninjas on there and just called it, a, just called it a day, they'd be. <laughs> that's it. We're done. Magic's yeah. done. If it was ninjas and dinosaurs, I'd get back into magic. But pirates, nothing for me. Dead to me. <laughs> Who wins in a fight, a ninja or a pirate, Haspel? Uh, ninja. Why are you even asking? I know. I already know your opinions of ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> You're like just one time. I want a movie where a ninja shows up and just everyone fucking dies. End just, just once. I want to see like one ninja show up. 
like just one, not 20 or 40 from the hand and daredevils kicking the crap out of these guys who have literally spent all their lives mastering all this stuff. And he's, <laughs> just, and yeah. And he's also the only hero who has a disability. In either <laughs> but I just want one ninja to show up and dudes to just run for their lives because, <laughs> because he's that much of a badass. It'd be great. Instead of just faceless cannon fodder. <laughs> Extras with masks on who die. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You got it. All right. Seems good. So Twitch, let's do a Twitch update. I I, I don't know where Jason Craze is, but he's normally our Twitch guy. Slowfusegaming.com. So Twitch is where we do our live tutorials. And now the big buzz on the street is that we've got the what is it? What what is it? What what would you call a device that holds your paints and organizes them so your Beats Lab doesn't look like my Beats Lab? I think you shoebox. Shoebox, shoe box, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so paint organizers, paint racks, modular paint racks. That's the new heat, new word on the street from Slovies Gaming. I'm gonna get some in soon to start organizing the the Beats Lab, and hopefully it works out for me. I'm super stoked because if you guys ever watch my live show, you know that I constantly waste minutes of time looking for paints. You should just start by looking at the floor first. I know. God, it's almost always. Whatever, okay. whatever it is, it is by your left foot. It's either by my left foot or behind my tablet. It's, and when I always look everywhere and then I'm like, fine, I'll look. But God damn it. Behind a fucking tablet. Every fucking time. But that, mm. that's the word on the street. And I guess I. Uh, Twitch, we've got you. You you gave away Mortarion recently, and the new Lee coined Yo Dog pattern green. Uh yeah, Yo, Yo Dog pattern atomic green, and and that was pretty exciting. And I love you're like yo, and the internet had such a positive response on it. I'm gonna do my own Mortarion this colors, and I was like, oh sweet, people like that color now. They used to always shit on me for using that color, and then I heard you say like, oh no, they said basically it's the worst shit ever. Why would I ruin this model like this? I think that yeah, I think the exact <laughs> quote was, why would you ever ruin Mortarion by painting them those terrible greens? And I was like, I was gonna do it that cream like that pre heresy on mine, and I was like, well, obviously my hand is forced. You have bolstered my resolve, sir. It's <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty pissing you off green. That's what it should be called. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. And so that was pretty funny. And I heard you say, call it Yo Dog Pattern Green for the first time the other day. And I laughed my ass off. And then you showed me that picture from Forge World of that new uh, Blood Bowl team. <laughs> so good. Like, dude, did you guys see this picture? All right. Just please tell me that they're painted in Yo Dog, I Hate Your Face Green. Yo Dog, I Hate Your Face uh, Green and Pink. Like my, my exact signature color palette influences like, so I, good. I mean I'm, the, it made the, me happy <laughs> the reach is strong like i mean it made me happy as fuck because like it looked perfect on those level guys like it's the right context they looked awesome real quick did you have to take a double take it's like when the when the fuck did i paint those blood bowl models i well, did yeah, he, yeah that's what i did. <laughs> that's what I, did. <laughs> I just i just looked i looked up i saw it pop up in my feed and i was like oh can you paint some blood bowl and then i was like wait a minute i'm on forge world site <laughs> <laughs> so you I'm got I'm, I'm, painting son of a bitch. I'm glad that this is finally happening because the simple joy of painting those colors is so it's so much fun, guys. And so I'm just glad that more people are getting are open to it now. But I'm also glad there's a pocket group of people who think it's the stupidest thing ever and Rob should kill himself. That's like every day on the internet, really. Obviously, Rob, those paints, those color schemes, they really make your face look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say that actually. <laughs> it's like Rob, great job, but man, if you could just do something with your face. Yeah. The paint I can deal with, but it's your face, dude. Let's guys, let's do a commercial break real quick and then let's talk about Amic. Elrixhobbies.com is your exclusive portal to upgrading your hobby. When you sign up at the longmore.net you gain an instant promotional discount, good for 10% off at Elric's Hobbies. Elric'sHobbies.com. Dear veterans, quickly, make your way to thelongwar.net and find out how to reap your hard-earned spoils of this long war. For our allies at SecretWeaponsMiniatures.com have rewarded us all with an extra 10% discount on all Secret Weapon Miniatures merchandise. So stock up, dear veterans, and 
enjoy. Veterans, I've got news for you. Get your best deals online at dicehead.com. Along with vets, call or email for your best vet deals. That's dicehead.com. And we're back. Admic? Yes, please. I'm Adeptus Mechanicus. I'm Adeptus Mechanicus. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Yo, so, so you, uh, you want to hear a funny stick story? I do. <clears throat> Haspel will appreciate this. I'm not, I'm not talking to you young people anymore. Uh, so my dad had this really nice, when he was in the service, he got this like really nice uh, high fidelity uh, record player and, and radio receiver from, I don't know, wherever. He was super proud of it. It was like his pri- prized possession. I was not allowed to get anywhere near or touch it under penalty of, of groundation and, you know, banishment to my room for the rest of my life. So <laughs> that song came out in like, I don't know, the early 80s. We'll just say the early 80s. And I had my Fisher Price um, a cassette recorder <laughs> and it had a little microphone on the side and you could like record stuff with it. Right. This is all like super plastic and everything. <laughs> and I was like, I love this song. And I would wait next to the speaker, which was as big as me with my little, my little microphone <laughs> up to the speaker. So I could like record it and like play it anytime I wanted for myself because you know, that was like what you had to do back then. Yeah. Back in the day when you had to like sit next to the radio and wait for them to play your favorite song, if you wanted to just get the single. (laughs) And they would always Uh, play the station identifier, like the middle of the song. (laughs) So like (laughs) you would always get it and it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be as cool, but it's still, that's all you had back then. So I would sit there and my mom took a picture of me. Like I sat like all day on one Saturday, just waiting for them to play the, this, that song Domo Arigato by by Sticks <laughs> with my little Fisher Price recorder <laughs> next to the big high uh, high fidelity speaker that was as big as me. I, I can't tell you how many awesome songs I had in high school that were coming to you hot from Power ninety six Miami <laughs> South Florida's number one official hip hop. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> so tell us about Mr. Roboto. Admic, Mr. BDB Call himself it has arrived with all his friends. And if you don't know what BDB means, look it up or just listen two more seconds because it's Big Dick Bandit. <laughs> spoiler. So, alert. yo, spoiler, you don't have to look it up anymore. Uh, I am really excited what they've done for it. Uh, for the Colt Mechanicus, I kind of am shocked that they're not 7th edition yet that powerful but there is a lot of units that are pretty good. So um, kind of like what we did in the webcast, uh, ideas and thoughts from B- me playing before, before. You, before you get too far into it, I sure. have a question that's kind of bu- bugging me. Did they make, did they, is it still Cult Mechanicus or is it, did they put in the, uh, the other Mechanicus guys? So it's all one. Uh, Skatari, Admech, it's all, excuse me. It, it, it's all together. It is all together now. Okay, cool. Yep. And so um, with the release of this book, if you don't already know, the book has seven different forge worlds that you can choose from. Each forge world giving you uh, different buffs as if everybody is Adeptus uh, Astartes and then I'm playing Ultramarines that give me this faction. I'm playing Raven Guard that's giving me this faction. So a couple standout Forge Worlds in my mind at first glance is obviously one of the best is Mars. That is the home world of Call BDB himself. He allows you with having the Call or the Forge World um, Dogma, that's the name of the, the cool shit that they get, you get to basically pick whatever you want from the canical chart if you decide to roll. If you are from Mars, you get to roll an extra dice on the canical chart. So that means you're rolling two dice instead of one, keeping both results. At first glance, I thought you just roll two dice and pick whatever you wanted as per normal GW. They didn't. They threw us a zinger. They said roll two dice. As long as doubles aren't rolled, which if a double is rolled, there's no extra canical, but you get both results. Well, guess what happens when you bring call? You get to add one or subtract one from each roll, a.k.a. If you roll a good spread, two through five, that's all. Yeah, if you roll a two and a five, you get to pick any two canicals you want. Every turn. And now, uh, uh, one of the secret gems that I love about this 
is it doesn't say choose at the beginning of the game. You're either going to roll for the, the entirety of the game or you're going to choose from the entirety of the game. It just says if you choose, you specifically can't choose that same one multiple times. So if you just want turn one, you just say, I'm not going to choose. Or excuse me, I'm not going to roll. I'm just going to choose the one I want. And then from there on out, you can roll multiple dice and get multiple effects and add pluses and minuses. No. You know, um, so there's guarantees mixed in with high probabilities, which is kind of unheard of for GW. Normally, we have to get one or the other. Um, so or we have to spend really 10 command points to get what we want. True. Not in um, Also, <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, for 10 command points in 8th edition, you basically get everything you want, uh, yeah, including you upgraded chapter masters and relics and <laughs> assaulting units turn one. And, uh, you know, so either way. Uh, my second one, Robbie B. Do I get a minus one to hit? Hey, you know that's right. So the Stygies 8 dogma is your opponent must subtract one from their hit rolls when shooting at units with this dogma if they are more than 12 inches away. Yeah, so this Forge World, uh, they obviously uh, reside, in, reside in Pacific Rim. <laughs> that's all, all I think of is this is the guy juice. <laughs> they, they all did get a minus one. Uh, your enemies get a minus one to hit, uh, which is strong. And I love the fact GW did not drop the ball. Good job. Shout out to you. That giving every army that is coming out, whether it be Raven Guard for Space Marines, whether it's all different kind of demons with Zinch and the Changeling, whether it's anything that new is coming out, everybody is getting the opportunity to have a minus one to hit in their army. Good for you. Shame on you if any army that ever comes out that doesn't have that a special ability. You know, people need to have the, the option to have that, uh, which, and we don't even need to go into details knowing how strong that is, especially considering we know how much firepower that, uh, Castellan robots, that Catafron destroyers, Cadillacs as we call them, with heavy grav, with Vanguard, with different things out there, uh, having defense on top of all that offense is really solid. Uh, also, another really good one on the list, uh, we can go to, can I run and shoot? That's my favorite one. Yep, that's one too. Uh, that's Metallica. A unit with this dogma advances. It can ignore the penalty for firing assault weapons and treats all rapid fire weapons. It is armed with as assault weapons until the end of the turn. Oh my goodness. That's, mm -hmm. that's how, crazy. How huge is this, right? So this gives a lot of play. Uh, one of the units that I think that we'll see in uh, droves now are going to be Vanguard. Okay. Vanguard get uh, really good shooting weapons, just their base weapon, which is an iridium carbine that gets on the roll of sixes to hit. They get more hits. I love this mechanic. I also love that they get three shot plasma weapons, plasma culvers at 18 inches. Right. Um, and you can get a 10 man squad and your 10 man unit can have three plasma culvers. They can have three special weapons on top of the sergeant uh, because they're cool. So. For uh, and that'll rack in with special weapons on top of your um, alpha, which is your sergeant. You can kit that unit out for 122 points, 127, somewhere in that range uh, that can put out really, really good firepower. But what happens is uh, sometimes they are very finicky. They don't have the durability with feel no pains and vulnerable saves. Granted, last edition, they were six of vulnerables. They were five of feel no pains. They weren't that good. But with Shroud Psalm and things like that, they were very durable. Almost you couldn't kill them. Now they're not. They died just as easy as a conscript. Um, if you have minus one to hit and you get Shroud Psalm off, on your canical, now you're at a minus one to hit and you're counted as being in cover, even if you're not. The one thing that they did miss, in my opinion, that Shroud Psalm should be able to give you cover in additional plus one to cover if you are in, if your unit is already receiving a cover bonus. I believe that with all the negative modifiers that we have in 8th edition, that giving a plus two cover save is perfectly okay. But they opted not to. Um, so I can see where this unit, you could easily put eight of these, seven of these on the table. 
that's 70 models that shoot um, a lot of plasma, a lot of uh, regular shooting attacks. And on turn one, they are in your grill doing their thing. They move yeah. their six, yeah. they advance. They are, they are an alpha strike that deploys. No, it's uh it's pretty strong. I think that the moving and advancing is and shooting is cr- is crucial. I find that to be very tactically flexible. I mean, I like not be I like the negative one hit. I like two dice, you know, for canticles. I like all that. But man, I love this aggression, like moving around, setting up your angles and going. What do you think of the um yeah. the stratagem for uh Stygie's aid? Is this the one for Mortal Wounds? This is hold on, let me double check. Okay, so the the one where you subtract one. So if so if you're Stygie's subtract eight, one, what buddy? Uh subtract one to hit. So Stygie's eight also allows you to infiltrate. Um at the beginning of the first battle round, if you, you pay the one command point, you can set up more than nine inches away. So, so you're at, um, but you're not at a minus one to hit anymore, right? Because you are within twelve inches. Well, I mean, you could be, you could, you could set up twelve inches away and still be twelve inches away now. And well, I guess they could step up and shoot you, but if you know you're going first, I guess you could do it that way. So there's there's specific stratagems that go along with um, the dogmas as well. Each one of the dogmas. My, uh, Again, way to go, GW. It's something that uh, we touched on in the webcast is that 8th edition GW, this is what they did. Tau book comes out. Oh, Tau. Um, you get Interceptor, Skyfire, uh, re-roll everything, whatever. It doesn't matter. You get all these special rules. No fluff, no cool whatever. You just get blanket special rules. Like, how ridiculous was Tau for eighth edition, sixth edition? Mm-hmm. Like it didn't even make any sense. You know, it's frustrating because also Space Marines didn't have interceptors so readily available to them. Uh, Nids didn't have all these other cool uh, re rolls to hit and all this other stuff. You know, just like, like how the Tau. So it was very like, wow, are you kidding me? They get all these special abilities no one else does. I love the fact that GW is saying, no, we are going to give. Everybody, some form of feel no pain. Everybody's going to get some form of being able to do mortal wounds. Everybody's going to be able to get, uh, you know, infiltrating minus one to hit kind of stuff. So uh, GW is definitely keeping on par with the offensive output creep, if we it's call the, it that. It's, it's the roles we were talking about earlier. Everything is going to have similar roles in the game, and we can see that coming through right now. Like, the Space Marine Codex is out. The Death Guard is out. The Chaos mm-hmm. Space Marine is out. And now this is out. And you're seeing this theme of stratagems that all basically do the same thing with different names and different explanations on them. You're seeing Legion, uh, Chapters, uh, Forge Worlds. You're seeing all these things that roughly do similar things, had different names and, and, and fluff assigned to them. So by the end of this whole thing, when we get all these codexes, you're not going to have to be super overwhelmed by a billion different you know, little special rules and stratagems and command point usage. You, you basically know you're like, Oh, is that, wh- which one is that? Oh, is that the one that's plus one to hit? Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that the, is that the uh, minus one to hit when I'm outside of 12 inches? Cool. 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 Like they're all going to have similar roles. Yeah. Without that's doubt. Good. Instrumental imbalance. Mm-hmm. There's, there's definitely a lot of overlapping abilities here that we're about to, I'm sure talk about more too. Very similar yeah. to death guard. Yeah, we got some and we got some clutch stratagems because like we've been we've been hot on these triple shot units, you know, that roll sixes and get two additional hits. Twenty yeah, dudes. So that's that's just yeah, the that, camp right now. Yeah, so th- there's a couple uh units that obviously in eighth edition weren't the ones, you know. Uh you didn't really see uh uh Excuse me, the Electro Priests, you didn't really see them. You mm-hmm. didn't really see the Calliston or, uh, excuse me, the robots. Okay. Um, in eighth edition right now, you are only going to see robots. You are only going to see Electro Priests. I mean, call and those two units, or sometimes without call. But the Electro Priests right now are doing, are filling the battlefield role of so many units. Uh, that are putting out mass 
firepower of strength four or so around that three to five um, with ridiculous amount of shots. These electro priests, just so you know, are coming in. They can have a block of 20, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I really like the fact that if you telling me I've, I can have a block of 20, I am just going to take 20. I'm not going to take the minimum of 10. You know, I'm going to take overwhelming firepower. Um, the, it's the reason why conscripts, uh, you know, marked up cultists with special abilities and veteran of the long war that can do all these ridiculous amount of shooting or uh, plague bearers or, or excuse me, noise Marines can do all this mass amount of firepower. I'm going to take it to the max. I'm not going to limp on with these little things. So a 20 man unit, is just for, for freeze, their weapon is shooting. That's 60 shots. That's three shots each. Well, Electro Priest on the roll of a six to hit, they get an extra two shots. Yeah, and we did the math on so, it. It's, it's, uh, if you have 60 shots, you're going to hit 40 times, but you're going to have enough sixes that you get 20 free hits, so you get 60 hits. And that's without uh, having – you know, up a, a, a re-rolling one because of your canicles and the shooting yeah. case. Without so without any re-rolls, you don't even need it. Without any re-rolls, sixty shots of sixty hits, mathematic. Yeah, I mean that's that's huge. Then Robbie B, what do we get for spending one command point? Hey, did you guys know that there's a stratagem that um what is whatever the army attacks in the shooting phase, each time you make a wound roll a six up for that unit, the target suffers a mortal wound in, in addition, addition to other damage. Yeah. So what's the name of it? Okay, so this is why I couldn't find it. It's two command points. It's the Wrath of Mars, and it's keyed to Mars keyword. So, obviously, I feel like Mars is going to be popular, so it shouldn't be so, that much of a problem. So, you take this same squad we were talking about, Haspel. 20 shots, or 20 dudes that have three shot sheets, 60 shots, right? But in the hit phase, when they're rolling the hit, six is equal to additional hits. You know how that works. So, if you hit on threes... You're going to miss 20 times, but you should have 10 sixes, which convert to 20 more hits. So you should yeah, have. Yeah, because it's like the Tesla rule. Yeah, it's whatever. exactly like Tesla rule. So uh, 20 dudes shoot 60 times, get 60 hits. And then they take 60 dice, throw them in the air, and every six is a mortal wound, which should be 10. So this unit mathematically can look at any tank in the game practically and say, it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Like. Yeah, and so that's 10 mortal wounds and 10. Regular wounds. Yeah, yeah, so the yeah, 10 it's the same again. Also come with 10 armor saves. Like yeah, yeah. Just, just on top of all the fives that you rolled because you're going to be wounded on five. And it, get, yeah, and it gets better. You could play, there's a stratagem that lets it adds one to the wound roll. Mm -hmm. So like, it's just like, so literally you're saying, so now double the number potentially of mortal wounds. It, and this is, so th th this is next level. This is like this unit. If you have like multiples of these units, like these have to be dealt with immediately. Yeah, but how much does that unit cost? Out of curiosity, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, for the one with 340 it, points. So yeah, 17. Is, it is a beefy unit then. Yeah, but they have a five of vulnerable with a five of feel no pain. Ugh. And they can that's, deflect. That's a problem. And they're uh, Mars, so you're going to definitely be running call. So they're going to be re-rolling all to hits. So you're actually a three-up re-rollable with sixes getting turned into multiple hits. You're on average a 20-man unit, if they're within range, is going to do like 72 hits. So it it's going to – Mathematically should kill anything it shoots at. It literally anything it shoots at, it's going to do, you know, without even the extra command points to wounding on, uh, doing mortal wounds on fives instead of sixes, you're still going to be doing, uh, you know, 12 mortal wounds and 24 armor saves if they need fives to wound. Okay, so I just come up with this awesome new Grey Knight army. I just deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> just That's played. what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. I heard about this unit yeah. and went, "Oh, Juice, yes. how does this how does this unit get get close enough to shoot you? Uh, what does it do?" Oh, oh, so I mean, it's still durable, right? So you still turn one, move in advance. You deploy on the ready line. You move in advance. If I'm not mistaken, they have a twelve. Their guns are only twelve inches, just a lot like the um, uh, their guns are Coltis. Yeah, that, that it is. So, I mean, this is definitely a turn two, turn three type of thing. So, you, uh, have, you, to you have to have threats on turn one to distract the enemy Correct. this unit moves up. Uh, Cadillacs are going to do that, but they're very expensive. Um, you're not going to see a lot of armies that have Cadillac destroyers um, or Castellan robots 
and these units because in all reality to do this in spades what you want you want 20 man units um you know you're not going to be able to have every toy you want uh, but i will say having a single maybe you don't run multiples of these but having a 20 man block on top of vanguard on top of uh, you want to talk about fast moving threats a fatty squad of five uh dragoons are going to put in work and tie a ridiculous amount of units um, while these guys get to come in. It's kind of cool to think that the firepower that this unit can do with a little help is delete worthy firepower like a, a thousand point unit would do, like the super chicken would do. Yeah, it might actually be worth pointing out too that there is a stratagem that lets you roll 2d6 when advancing with your uh, dragoons for one command point and also there is a it doesn't necessarily help with the mars uh, side of things so you wouldn't get your ball of serious buffs and you wouldn't get your free mortal wounds buffs but maybe there's some play there with the electro the melee electro priest there is a way to teleport if you're taking lucius forge world and set something up nine inches away from the enemy at the end of any yeah. movement phases and uh, one thing that I want to touch on is the close combat electros pre electro priest, right? So uh, these might actually have more flexibility for most armies. You don't, in my opinion, you don't need a 20 man block of this. These are your counter assault units. If you are running a couple squad of Cadillacs call, um, you know, a couple squad of vanguards, um, onagers, these units go great paired with three plus onagers because you have enough range firepower that your opponent is going to want to get close and they're going to want to do it quick. This is the perfect counter assault unit because on top of all the ridiculous amount of attacks and they have all similar, very similar kind of buffs, when they get in close combat, sixes to wound do D3 mortal wounds instead of just one. And Robbie B, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty strong in close combat, aren't I? Plus two strength. So you're talking strength five and your neg two AP. So whatever doesn't cause a mortal wound is still probably going to do something. This is that black Robbie, star thing, though, that uh, Haspel was talking about, where like it passes over the unit. He rolls as many dice as equal to the unit and look at fishing for sixes. You got, and I remember Haspel brought, you know, brought this whole thing up. He's like, I have one of those too. And we were like, well, this thing we're talking about is different than that, but you also have one of those too. Yeah, like, and this unit, so, like, I'm going to give you the double whammy hassle. You ready? So, this unit has two ways it's going to mortal wound you. Uh, when it charges, it gets dice for models that are in the unit, and on the roll of a six, it's just off the charge. It's D on the roll of a six. It's hammer of wrath, and when you roll a six, it's a mortal wound. So, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool, right? Mortal wounds. And then in close combat, I get to do D3 mortal wounds on the roll of sixes to wound. Now, Robbie B, uh, when I'm swinging in close combat, do I do D3 mortal wounds in addition to my normal? No, it's instead. So if it's, Instead if of, okay. I just didn't know. Um, I know we went in detail with the shooting, so I didn't know if it was extra as well. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, with plus two strength, uh, at being extreme five, you're going to be doing a lot of threes fours and fives that are going to be killing toughness three four and up to you know nine toughness nine models yeah i don't think there's anything bad about these guys here at all no I mean, any, um any any and, of the stuff that's like six up to wound that's easily manipulatable i feel like yeah game that Absolutely. And so um, just to, I, I realized that I missed a point that I wanted to go back to. Um, if I'm not mistaking, the Forge World that is at a minus one to hit is the Pacific Rim. Is that right? Uh, I think that's the Stygies 8, yeah. Yeah, the, the Guide Juice. So um, I really like pairing this because I've been thinking about how can I play my models that I enjoy in this. That minus one to hit, I like the concept of utilizing them for uh, utilizing that forge world for rush stalkers for dragoons um, infiltrators really relying on those are the heavy close combat units so i want to keep me out of harm's way as much as possible considering that whenever i'm rolling on the chart or turn one if i get to go first i'm at a minus one to hit and i'm just going to pick out of my canical chart i'm in cover even if i'm not 
So I'm going to get a plus one to my armor save and I'm a minus one to hit for the entire turn one until I get close to you. Cause I plan on doing that, but it's fine because when I'm within the 12 inches where I'm not at minus one uh, to hit anymore, I'm going to be in close combat with you where that's where I want to be. So that's a cool concept. If you're the rust stalker infiltrator type, you know um, I believe that across the board, as we've spoke, you're going to see electro priests in all variants and um, the robots that can basically plant a three man unit can do 20 plus strength, six shots that oh, that's, with canicles, dude, it, they are the truth. If, if you haven't ran into them and most people that run them, they aren't polite and they don't just run a squad or two uh, here or there, or two squads or two. They run eight plus. I mean, these these guys are incredibly resilient with six with six wounds toughness seven depending on what protocol you're rocking you could have a two up four up and vulnerable at that point um, or you can go on the offensive and you can change that uh, phosphor blaster that juice was just talking about from a heavy three string six neg two ap damage one that ignores cover to a heavy 2d6 shot and this is all at 36 inch range, ignoring cover, doing that kind of work. Uh, pretty, pretty solid in general. Yeah, I mean, just the offensive that they can just do. And those, um, those, uh, I'm sorry, Rob, the Kessler? protocols that oh, no, that, that protocol is completely different than the canicles that you're going to be having up. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, that's different than when Call is standing next to them if they're Mars from uh, the Mars Forge world because they're just going to be re-rolling, you know, to hits. Uh, and uh, unreal, unreal. And then furthermore, when you're getting shot at on the roll of a six uh, save, the, the wound or the, the damage that would have been inflicted gets put back onto the, the guy who just shot it. I.e., if I have a falchion, for anybody who doesn't know, that, that shoots the big-ass volcano cannons, and I shoot my poor little uh, castle and robots, and within one of the saves, the, I'm going to die. It's fine. If I have to take five or six saves, I am dead now because it does so much damage, but I roll five, six dice. If I roll one six, one successful volcano cannon goes back to the falchion. <laughs> Like, it is unreal what you can do. And when you've got eight to ten of these bastards running around, um, you're going to – I'm just here to tell you, your Night Titans aren't happy, your Basilisks, your, your, your Mana Cores, your Earth Shakers, your Xiphons, these units aren't happy when Last Cannons are getting shot back at them in their turn. Yeah, nobody likes to take Mortal Wounds back randomly. They just – No. Nope. Like I, I, I hate it. <laughs> it sounds so strong. The dragoons are probably worth mentioning too. Um, you know, we, we talked about that canical a second, or not canical, the strategy a second ago that lets you roll TD6 for the advance move. But their taser lance is no joke either. Uh, it's rocking that neg one AP two damage plus three strength. So you're looking at strength eight. Each hit of a six causes three hits rather than one. Again, we all know how easy it is to manipulate both hit rolls and wound rolls right now. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. I feel like having those guys Manip across. manipulating wound rolls is one of the strongest things because so many things in the game are telling you, you do bonus shit on certain rolls. Um, yeah. And there's just so many abilities in this list that's like yo if you hit on a six if you wound on a six all that stuff in this in this army here is so huge to be working those angles yeah um one thing that i would like to talk about is that i don't know unless you're going to run an entire 2000 point army aka 2000 point event I have to admit, I don't know if I'm on board yet if I say that a two solid, just 2,000-point list of nothing but admec is in the competitive scene the same way. A lot of their units are very point uh, not efficient. Cadillac Destroyers, now granted, they shoot five heavy grab shots each. You know, uh, they have multiple wounds. But you wounds. need some water. You need some cheap-ass motherfuckers. That you, get you that's exactly right. And uh, Kenny, they don't have it. 
shy of Vanguard, which do a lot of firepower and do really good. But I mean, when we talk about cheap we're guys, talking, we're talking five points is how much that guy costs at the max. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. And Vanguard, uh, they're not there. They're, you know, they're on the 11 point scale, you know, the nine point scale, depending on what weapons and stuff. So, uh, I, I just don't know, you know, you can have a very elite army, but it's not uh, necessary, can, right? It's not, it's just not necessary. It's like, this is a, this is a, you know, Imperium army with very, elite, very specialized units and, you know, fill it out with things that you need to. They need to be, they need to be used. That's exactly what I'm saying. They need to be used according. Uh, I would love to see almost um, a a, a whole lot of my armies. I'm going to be running a squad of these badass electro priests call and maybe some robots, maybe some Cadillacs, maybe some Vanguard in with my Astra Militarum mortar, conscript uh veteran army Yo, that unit is gangster man like <laughs> i would put in a lot yeah, i is. like this i like these imperium books augmenting the imperium and like and this this book like you said it's very clear like you ain't gonna pay no 11 points per model for a bubble wrap that's not what I, that's no. you know, i look at this book and i'm like oh what can i take out of this book to infuse into my correct like, correct like, and what also Forge world is going to come to my aid you know yeah, uh, a great caveat to that, a great point to that is, uh, Kenny, guess what Call can do now, the BDB? In uh, the old index, it said when he heals units, he can heal himself, D3 wounds, and he can heal Astra Militarum units within uh, three inches, D3 wounds. Guess what they've caveat that to I think say? you mean Mechanicus. Uh, excuse me, Mechanicus. They now uh, have opened it up to he can heal any Imperium model mm-hmm. within three inches. Mm-hmm. One wound. Or mm-hmm. if you're a Cold Mechanicus model, you get D3 wounds back. Mm-mm-mm. That so seems they good. want you to play this dude with mm-hmm. anybody. Yeah, he's saying he does more for his people, but he'll, he'll help you guys. He's an augmenter. I like this. This is, this is what I love, man. This is, this is exactly what I've been saying. Let's just... Just look at these things as like the fluff even says, like the vast majority of the Imperium's fighting men are Astra Militarum, and then they have all these elite special forces like elements within the Imperium that have very specific battlefield roles. I like this. This makes me happy to hear. You know, 350 point units that can delete anything in the game if put in the right situation. I like this. And uh, again, their durability will not stand out in a pure. Um, Ad mech army. They have a five up, five up. Probably the best combination of saves in the game. Five up vulnerable, followed by a five up, uh, per, in parentheses, feel no pain. That is the best two saves you can have. And I don't care if you have a two up and a five up. I don't care. You know, you, your cost effectiveness, obviously, a two yeah. up to a five up is better. But like, well, I mean, like, I mean many, like an invulnerable, a, a, a five up invulnerable, or a four up invulnerable, or any invulnerable to the, to the feel no pain. I mean, so but that we're going at the worst. Like we're going like, yo, it's a five to a five. That is five, five to a five, right? Better um, if it's one damage, it's better than a three up save. Correct. Um, I what I love about this is you can put this in a twenty man blob. Like this is, um, what are the Poxwalker style? Like this is this is Nurgle durable. It's literally the same. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, nothing, wounds, nothing wounds people. But it's hard to wound on a six anymore. Mostly, you're wounded on threes. Like this, mm-hmm. like this is all good. I love this. It's very. Yeah, but uh, the difference is, is where uh, the uh, my point to that was. I'm sorry, is that they don't have a cheap unit to fill in the blanks. So uh, you really want to take this unit and add it to other armies. Um, Pox walkers would be less good unless they're, you know, if there weren't cultists around to bubble wrap them and take up things. And so when they're having to be the main target, this unit could easily go into your sister's army, for example. You ready, Haspel? When you've got your retributors in the back shooting all their heavy bolters and you've got some dominions hauling ass in uh, different kind of emulators and whatever other kind of tanks, and you've got this 20 man block and all it is that you've added in into your all sisters army right is this 20 man block of electro priests with call in the center they're re-rolling all there to hits they take mid board now you're pressing with all these other sisters and all these other units and now this is like the 
the meat of your army. You know, um, it's, it's pretty solid. And yeah, anybody definitely. who was yeah. running sister, anybody who's running sister repentance, in my opinion, the close combat version of these electro priests are better than a sister repenter. So, uh, when we get done, I will send me your address. I know I have it somewhere. I have 14 of them in a plastic bag right now, unpainted. I will send Oh, heck you. yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> How many HJs or ZJs would you like in exchange? <laughs> Uh, one day I will just take you up on your offer to let me have your elephant model that I'm so in love with. Oh yeah. I got to send that out to you. I'm sorry, man. I, I spaced oh, you're it. Good. Hilarious. So very passionate discussion on Admic, which is funny because that's juice's last hurrah in seventh edition was the, mm-hmm. was the old war convocation. And it was yeah, one of and the it first was, forays in the eighth edition was trying to make that work again, right? Yeah, yeah. And it it was uh, it didn't happen. Um, and that's where I figured out where Warcon in seventh edition was the ultimate standalone army. Also, when you're getting seven hundred points or five hundred points with a free war gear, and then all these canicles and doctrines that basically make your army invincible is like you can be standalone, you know. Um but that did not translate over very well to 8th edition. What I want to give GW all the credit in the world, because if you look at it, guys, they pulled the trigger on a young book pretty early. Like in all reality, Colt Mechanicus and Skatari and all these units, these are like young. We Tau look old compared to these. this book. You know, they've been around. Uh, so when when we talk about 8th edition and new books dropped, we are getting like the OGs, the chaos. Astro Militarium is around the corner. Uh, Nurgle is getting the love. Like uh, Space Marines, obviously. Gray Knights, like these hardcore, beefy armies that we've known and loved for years. And then when I heard that they were putting Admech above NIDS and above a lot of these other armies that uh, are also staples, I was like, oh, no. They're going to just like push this book out. It's going to be shit. It's not going to be. Um, and I am just, I'm really impressed with how they have given the love of eighth edition to specific units and combos in Colt Mechanicus and in and, and, and Admech, excuse me. I mean, I, I am just really impressed with it. Uh, again, is it a standalone? Is it going to break a uh, tournament? Is it going to win uh, Adepticon this year? Absolutely not, in my opinion. But it is very competitive. All right, guys, this is the big news, big word on the street. This was made official today. The Long War Primer coming to Temecula, California, SoCal Games and Comics. We will be doing our standard doubles event, bringing hobby back format, two-day event here in Southern California. This is happening. Uh, I think the soft date right now is January 13th. We will have more on that to come. You should be able to start buying tickets for this thing in October. It's, we're going to blow the lid off of it. We're going to definitely not let you guys forget when and where, what the format is. We're going to have all sorts of special accommodations made. This is going to be the first year we do this thing. and with the idea of doing more of these in the future. It's going to be very strategically before LVO, before Depticon. This is going to be your bringing hobby back primer that you can travel to and have a you know super fun weekend of, of fun games with fellow hobby enthusiasts. Because you know how we do, right? 50% hobby score, 50% battle score. Thanks to the legendary Mike Haspel who put all that time into for at least two years developing our format. So yeah, it took a, it took a while. <laughs> it, yeah, it took us some time, but that that is the big news that just came that happened today. So more to come: commercials, spiky bits, links, Facebook updates, all day every day. In case you didn't realize, all day every day is my version of over and out. Haspel, take us out of here. Honor of the new Netflix Punisher trailer dropping. Innocents suffer, and the guilty must be punished. My battlefield symbols aren't red, white, and blue. They're blood red and personal.